Come in. Aye, aye. Still in the land of the living, are you? Come in, Jimmy. <laughs> oh. Bag's packed, eh? Looks like you've decided to get off, then. Yeah, my mind's well and truly made up. I've been up half the night clearing up covers. I wanted to leave the place in good order. Ah. So this is you going for good, is it? For definite? Yeah, I thought I'd catch up on our gems first, and down the smoke, see our Leo, and take it from there. Make some kind of new start. Good on your skin. You go for it, lad. <laughs> Maybe she should have gone to casualty, you know. No, it's OK. Have you got some kind of phobia about people in uniform? Pardon? Well, we could have done Mick Johnson for assault yesterday if we'd phoned the police. No, it wasn't a problem. Oh, yeah, only because I came and did me cavalry bit. He was genuinely upset. The last thing he needed was the police on his back. <laughs> I'm amazed you haven't packed the kettle. What was the last thing to go on? In the bog roll, yeah. <laughs> Really gone to town, haven't you? Stripped all the bedrooms and all. Yep, the whole house top to bottom. And uh, I found something that Tim left behind and all. Oh. Well, I'll take them over for him. Mm. And that green bag there, found on top of the wardrobe. Oh, on top of the wardrobe, eh? <laughs> oh, say no more! <laughs> hey, listen, mate. What are you going to do with the house? Found the estate agent, put it on the market. Well, you don't hang about, do you? Done enough for that already, Jimmy. It's time I put this place behind me. Yeah. You've had some good times round here, though, haven't you? Yeah. A few mares and all. Well, it happens. <laughs> Could have done without that Jenny one making my life hell, though. Mm. And all the years sharing the bed with Simbad. Get out of it. That was the gossip round here. <laughs> <laughs> I know it was desperate at times, but there are limits, you know. <sighs> I let him down in the end, didn't I? Just when he needed a mate. He survived. Same as you, Will. You'll be missed, you know. Anyway, I was hoping to get an early start, so I better get a move on. Well, yeah, give you a lift out with the gear, eh? Oh, nice one. Sooner I leave this place, sooner I get to see our Yeah, sooner we get rid of you and all. <laughs> all this to go, is it? Yeah, apart from the charity shop stuff, which is in the living room there. Listen, Jimmy, can you do us a favour? Mm. I need to leave the key with a mate, uh, a neighbour, just so that in case the agent comes around or there's a flood or something like that. Yeah, uh, no, swear, leave one with me. Listen, mate, I want to thank you for yesterday, for taking the time to put me straight. <sighs> You got there yourself in the end, didn't you? You helped me move on, Jimmy. I won't forget that. Right. Well, um, I'll pop my bill in the post, eh? Well, come on, are we loading this car up or what? I thought Mick was trying to kill you when he came in here. Thanks. I always thought that Mick and Susanna were nothing special as a couple, but listening to him talk yesterday it's made me realise just how much he really loved her. Do you think? Mm, definitely. Even though he was off with that Yvonne straight away. Well, that happens, doesn't it? On the bounce, you mean? Yeah, well, you'd know all about that, wouldn't you? The reputation you got with the ladies. Well, <laughs> the reputation I had. I think I've grown up quite a lot these last few months. Anyway, you went out with Robbie on the bounce from Nathan. Not as quick as I went out with you after Robbie. <laughs> anyway, what's happened between me and you is different, isn't it? We're just so right for each other. I know we are. And you're still keeping me waiting for a yes or a no? To what question? Whether you'll finally get rid of your flat and move in here with me. Do you really, really want me to? Yes, I really, really want you to. <laughs> mean the world to me. Wow. Case, isn't it? Probably, yeah. Uh... Case, isn't it? Give me, uh... Can I leave it with you for a minute? You got a couple of goodbyes to say? Something like that, yeah. That's if they'll um, open the door to me. Big if, I'd say. You get nervous about your exam results? Why are you interested all of a sudden? I'm your brother. No one else is interested in this house. Yet they are, everyone is. No, they're not. All you're all interested in is giving me a hard time. Just because I want to go out and enjoy myself. I've been made to pay for it ever since. I won't kick off again, I promise. I hope not, Mick. Yesterday was more than enough. I know, and that's why I'm here. To say how sorry I am. I suppose you better come in then. Thanks. 
All right. Mick wants to apologize for yesterday. Right. Look, I, I was bang out of order. I, I just wanted to say that. OK. I don't know what I was thinking about, never mind saying. And I just lost it, I guess. You know, loads of things got on top, and I, I took it all out on you. Well, that's all right, Dad. No harm done. Apart from you getting half choked. We could have had you for assault, you know. I know that, and I couldn't have blamed you if you got the police out to me. Well, we weren't protecting you by not calling them. We just didn't want the hassle for ourselves. Yeah. Anyway, I thought I'd let you know as well. Um, I'm getting off today. I put the house on the market, and uh, in case you noticed, it was empty, you know. Oh, getting off for good, you mean? Uh, anywhere in mind? No, no plans. Apart from catching up with our Gemma. Then our Leo. I really miss the both of them, you know, and uh, it's time I did some of that dad stuff again. Well, that sounds good. Uh, best of luck. Yeah, I knew. Yeah. <clears throat> look, look, I, as I said before, I, that yesterday I just totally lost it. Coming around here, slinging all kinds of accusations at you. I mean... You know that thing about the children, about getting close to them? <sighs> it's the same with me and Harry and Emma. It helps you understand what's important in life. Mick, I really do hope it works out for you. Yeah, me too. I'll see you. <sighs> won't be the same without him around. Be for the best, though, won't it? I mean, at least we won't have to worry about him anymore. Going around accusing you of pushing Susanna down the stairs. Oh, yeah. So I tell you, moving off the clothes today. All right. Where to? Anywhere I can find that I like. I'll be going to London soon, though, and visit our Leo. Is that why you're moving out? It's me and Leo. He really made a mess of your life, didn't he? Not really. I mean, I'm just carrying on like before. I'll get my exam results tomorrow. All oh, right. Look, I um, hope all this, you know, hasn't affected your grades. I don't think it will have done. I should have done okay. Good to hear you sound so confident. I'll tell him I'll talk to you. Don't let you talk like that very often. About what? Both Harry and Emma and how much they mean to you. Well, I suppose you take them for granted, don't you? Well, it was nice listening to you like that. Well, it's easy to forget. You know, just how special children are you, hustling them from one thing to the next, and all the time they're these walking miracles right in front of you. <laughs> Can't imagine my dad thinking like that about me. I was a right little pest when I was a kid. <laughs> so you're talking to Adele there before? Yeah, she was asking after our Leo. All oh, right, that wouldn't be the same Leo that got that underage girl pregnant. Nothing gets past you, does it, Jimmy? Well, I was just wondering, you know. Bet the Murrays must be in a sweat over there. What about me? The bad lad's dad? Well, I live and learn, eh? So is it sorted on the QT? Yeah, she had an abortion. All right, tough. Made me think, you know, Jimmy. Take a good look at my own life. That baby she was carrying would have been my grandchild. Still, wasn't to be, eh? So, do you reckon that's it for the packing, then? Well, I hope there's nothing left, cos there's no space in that car. Any room for me? A little one. <laughs> Come ahead, let's get it over with. Get out of it. <laughs> when did they decide to sell up? Oh, last night. Here's the keys, Jimmy. All oh, right, it's OK. Listen, don't be worrying. I'll keep a good eye on the place for you. You want to see me off, have you? No, I only just found out. You told her what we found, Jimmy? Oh, I, I yeah. What well, you left behind when you moved out? A. <laughs> B. The matching bra. <laughs> Where'd you find those? <laughs> on top of the wardrobe. Hey, you'll be telling us that Emily's next. No, they are. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do you reckon they suit me, though? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Hello, boys. <laughs> Yes, nice one. A little twirl. <laughs> What's this for? I 
thought I'd wish you luck with your exam results. You let me have a go at you before. I didn't have much choice, did I? And I thought everyone hated me. Thanks for listening, Jimmy. And, you know, being there for me. Well, I've been there myself, haven't I? You know, the lower depths. You know what it feels like, mate. Right then. Good luck, eh? And, um, sorry for letting you down. You let yourself down, that's what really mattered. Things are different for you now. Remember, you've got responsibilities, not just yourself anymore. You've got Emily to think about. Someone you love, okay? Hey, Jimmy, you haven't turned the water off or the lecky. We'll sort it. Go on, on your way, will you? Beat it. See ya. <laughs> Emily, look after your lady, okay? Will do. That's Mick gone. For good, I hope. But you feel the same, eh? Yeah. Well, sure. I mean, whatever's best for him. And what about what's right for you, eh? How do you mean? Well, I suppose what I'm trying to say is, after everything that's gone on, was it be all right if I moved in with you? You mean, you will? <laughs> if you'll have me. Jackie! Oh. <laughs> oh, it's perfect. Come on, you beaut. Turn the lackey off. Good lad. Hey, should have had you under here doing this. Yeah, well, give us a go then. You're all right, I've nearly got it now. Ah! On. That's better. It's weird, this, isn't it? The old place has been blitzed. Well, he was up all night doing it. It's like he's never even lived here. What a waste of an house. Sitting here empty. Hang on, you. I'm not having this place turned into a squat. Not while I'm looking after it. No, I wouldn't do that to Mick. I was just thinking if I was on better terms, me and him could still be living here. You know, looking after it for him. Oh, is that right? And how are you going to afford the rent? Why does everything always have to come back to money, eh? <laughs> because that is what makes the world tick. And everybody wants loads of it. Only they can't have it, because there isn't enough to go round. Why not? Well, I don't know. What are you asking me for? I'm not Karl Marx. Karl who? Marx! Big fella with the beard did all that stuff about the haves and the have-nots. Never heard of him. Well, probably wouldn't put money in your pocket if you had. See? He's never done me any favours. Probably never has, no. But he lives in a big house, though, eh? And if he's famous, he's got loads of money. He's been dead a hundred years. <laughs> Typical. Can't even go round and screw his house. Hey! Less of that screwing houses talk, you. Remember what Mick said? You've got responsibilities now. Yeah, and how am I supposed to live up to them, eh? I called up for another two jobs this morning. Didn't stand a chance, did I? As soon as they found out I'd been inside, they were gone. So don't you think there's a little moral here, Timothy? Like what? Like, so far, you've got one conviction behind you. And look how much that's affected your life already. And now you're talking about screwing more houses. That'll lead on to another conviction, and probably more after that, cos you'll be on a treadmill then, won't you? Hmm? And if you think it's hard trying to find a job now, how hard will it be then, eh, when you've got a string of convictions behind you? Hey, I should be doing that. Mm, beat you to it. Always feels best when the place is tidy. Good example for the kids as well. Gotta get them up on the right foot in life, haven't you? I'm a lucky man, aren't I? Mm. How do you mean? Well, after we buried Susanna, I thought, well, that's it. My life's over, but look at me now. Here with you and getting on with things, learning to love again. <laughs> so what are you saying? Do you love me enough to wash the crusty biscuits off this teddy bear? <laughs> I can think of a better way to prove how much I love you. Hmm. Sounds good to me. Mm. <sighs> oh, right, all shape shape, I think. 
I don't know, switched on upstairs? Nope, lecky's off. No dripping taps. Water's off. Good, hollow window's locked. Everything's checked. Good, time to put the kettle on, I think. Still feels like a waste, though. This house sitting here empty. <laughs> don't even go there. Come, Ed. What are you doing? Just looking into the future. You are? Me and Emily. I reckon one day we're gonna have a house like this. And two big flash cars outside. <laughs> and timeshare somewhere sunny. And a big fat balance in the bank. We'll be made. Come here, dreamer. You know why I think it is that you're not as concerned as a lot of people have been in the past? Um, yeah, you know, like your dad. Go on. Well, I think it's because I have changed. I mean, I've said it before. I've said it to Susanna. I've said it to Patricia more than once, hmm. to be honest. But it's because I have changed. And I feel it is for definite and for good as well. So, what, you're like the new Reg? You're the new model GT Max Fauna. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> In my head. <laughs> Inside. <laughs> Can't do anything about the exterior, though. Well, I wouldn't want you to. Do you mean that? Yeah. And anyway, what is with the big insecurity trip all of a sudden? No, oh, no, it's just that, well, like I said before, I just can't believe my luck, really. Getting things together with, with you like this. Jackie. What now? I was just wondering what you fancied on your sandwich. <laughs> Been a tough last few months for you, hasn't it? And I've grown up fast. I've had to. Can't have been easy for you. Or anyone else in the house. Especially my mum. I mean, she's desperate for a baby, and there's me throwing the abortion in her face. Was it really horrible? It's a load of things all messed up, really. I mean, it was a massive relief one minute, knowing that I was sort of free again. But then I'd have all these guilty feelings, like, has it stopped a new person coming into the world? Didn't help all us banging on, did it? All sticking our oars in. Do you think I did the right thing, getting rid of it? Yeah, I do. I never would have worked out with it. Do you think my mum will ever really forgive me? In time, she will, I think. When you've gone on to uni, maybe. I haven't even passed my GCSEs yet, have I? You'll do OK. And then when you come out to uni with flying colours and you've got some top job, Mum will look back and she'll know it's the right thing for you to have done. Me? In a top job? Better add, yeah. Getting a second chance at your life, aren't you? Better make the most of it. <laughs> I suppose it does still feel a bit weird. Us being together? Yeah. Well, I was just a little girl from next door, wasn't I? Well, you've grown up a bit now, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> One of them scally clampers you used to call me. <laughs> Seems like a lifetime ago. What, even longer? You and me dad were like sworn enemies. We had our moments. Hey, guess what he used to call you and Patricia? Do I really want to know? <laughs> Lord and Lady Farnham. <laughs> <laughs> Amongst other things. Yeah, Lord Sanusi was one of them. Yeah, well, <clears throat> but he's calling me a lot worse today. Yeah, it's tough. I don't care what he calls you. Hmm. You're really strong, you know that. I mean, we've only been together a short time, but, well, I've learned such a lot. Like what? Well, take each day as it comes, uh, always be positive about everything, always look forward all the time. You actually make me sound like some kind of self-help guru. <laughs> Well, if I do make you sound like a guru, I suppose I'm making myself sound like the bionic man because you've helped to rebuild me. A lot of the old Max I want to leave behind and a lot of the new Max I want to discover with you, if you'll let me. What was the last thing he said to you? Look after your lady. Why? <laughs> I think he was having a laugh. He was telling you what he'd learned in life. 
Look, he'd ended up in that big house on his own, hadn't he, hey? On his own! Rattling round in there with all his fancy gadgets, with his precious telly and all his other things. And he was so on his own in there, so gutted at being on his own, that he's got off. Going to see Gemma. Going to see Leo. Looking for a chance to start again. Maybe with someone new, someone he can maybe love. Because when it comes down to it, huh? When it comes down to it, it's not your flash car will see you through in your life, or your big house. It's being able to turn round at the end of the day. And who's there for you? The love of your life. That's what will get you through. The love in your life. And the last thing the love of your life wants for you, your Emily, the last thing she wants is you being behind bars because you've gone out on the rob just so as you've got a bigger telly than the buttes next door. You are so beautiful. Uh, what are you after? You. <laughs> Again? No, no. <laughs> you. I, well, I don't mean that. I mean, just, just you. You've lost me. You know, everything I said before about having changed, do you believe I have? Well, I think you have. Only think? No, you have. I'm sure you have. Well, I want you to trust me, because I, I want to always be there for you, because I desperately want you to always be there for me. OK. I don't want us to just keep seeing each other or just to live together. Jackie, will you make me the proudest, happiest man in the world? Will you marry me? How do you think you've done? I don't know. You must have some idea. You've got to do things properly. Get a decent job, then we can What do you think I've been doing for the past couple of months, eh? Sitting around twirling me thumbs. And that's what your mum and dad have got to realise. That you're an adult. You can do what you want and wear what you want. And it's got nothing at all to do with them. That's on Friday at 8.30. Next off, all the real birth show comes to a close following the mums-to-be who are expecting not one, but two or more babies. Today's the day, then. Yeah. How do you think you've done? I don't know. You must have some idea. Not very well. In all of them? She did have other things on her mind. I feel sick. Hey, come on, don't be soft. You won't go mad, will you? If I don't get any. But of course we won't. I wish I'd done more work. It's too late to be thinking about that now. I don't want to go. Hey, come on, don't be daft. There's more important things in life than passing exams. Come on. Hey, and come straight home after you've got them. I will, defo. Good luck. See you later. See ya. Oh, I hope she passes. Something we can do about it now, is there? Oh, no, go on. No, 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 you first. Well, uh, 
I just wanted to apologise. You must think I'm off my head. No, not at all. You know, saying I'll live with you one minute and then going all weird when you propose. No, look, it was a mistake. I, I was stupid and it was childish. I feel really bad not giving you the straight answer. You feel bad? How do you think I feel? Anyway, I've been thinking... Listen, Jackie, please, um, let's just forget it. Just forget I mentioned it. Max, I don't want to forget it. No. I, I don't want to mess you I, around. Look, I don't want you to say anything else. I feel like I've ruined things already. Please, let's just pretend that last night didn't happen. Oh, Max... When I said I'd think about it, I wasn't fobbing you off, you know. What? Well, I meant it. I'm gonna think about it. You mean you're saying, um... It's not a no? It's a maybe. I just need time to think, that's all. Oh, Jackie. <laughs> oh, honestly thought I'd blown it. Oh, did you really? Yeah, I honestly did. That was me as usual. Jumping in feet first, I thought I'd scared you off. I don't scare that easily. I love you, Jackie Dixon. Oh, where did that come from? I don't deserve you. Max, get out. You've gone all Mills and Boone. Oh, right, well, I'll um, see, see you later. later. <laughs> Do you even know why I'm doing this? What's the point? The point is, you want to get a job, otherwise we'll never get a place of our own. And who's going to employ me, eh? I've got a record. We'll just have to keep on looking. The only work I can get is in a stinking burger bar and in ten pence an hour. Something will come up. <laughs> you reckon? Of course it will. Somehow I doubt that. Look, as long as you don't do anything dodgy, I'm not bothered. And what's that meant to me, eh? Well, I don't want you breaking the law and getting arrested. What do you think I'm going to do, rob a bank? Look, you've got to do things properly. Get a decent job, then we can What do you think I've been doing for the past couple of months, eh? Sitting around twiddling my thumbs? I know that you haven't. I've been working my fingers to the bone for buttons. I know. Taking stick off divvies? What and what for? Nothing. I'm not saying that you haven't. What are you saying then, eh? I'm saying you've gone and got yourself sacked, so we need to find something else. Oh, so you think I shouldn't have done it? No, I don't. Do you think I should be out there working all hours, making a fool of myself? Just so you can go back and tell your nan I've got a job. I'm worried about you, that's all. You're worried about yourself. Tim, I'm scared that if you don't find a job, you'll end up going to prison. I'm sorry I'm not good enough for you. See you later. Tim? Tim? Tim, wait! Hiya. All right. How are you? Fine. How's married life? It's brilliant. You and Tim make a lovely couple. Ta. He's really good looking, isn't he? Do you love it, being married? Yeah, it's great. Just the two of you living together. No one having a go at you telling you what to do. Wish I was in your shoes. <laughs> you don't know the half of it. Let's see your ring. Adele, will you do me a favour and leave me alone? What's up? Nothing. Have I said something to upset you? No, it's nothing. You crying? What's wrong? You wouldn't understand. You're just a kid. I'm nearly 16. <sighs> Adele, I'll see you. Fine. Next time I won't bother being nice. Adele, hang on. I'm sorry. I'm sick of everyone treating me like a kid. Do you want to come in for a coffee? Got my GCSE results today. Really? <sighs> what time is my dad back? Oh, not till this afternoon. What's up? You will never guess what. Me and Max had a heart to heart last night, and he's asked me to marry him. Oh, <laughs> No, hang on, Max. Four pounds, thirty-seven pence. Oh, and twenty-five potatoes and a second-class stamp. How long's that got to last? <sighs> Till Wednesday, when I get my wages. I mean, that's what I was saying to him, was that he can't afford to live on what I'm bringing in and that he's got to get a job. He'll get something. He better that. I always thought you and Tim were minted. I mean, you both always look boss. I haven't bought anything for ages. I mean, these days I'm lucky if I can afford something from Gracie Market. So, people knocking Tim back from jobs? Because he's been in prison. Mainly, yeah. Oh, it's not fair, that, is it? No. I mean, it's all behind him now, isn't it? Eh, uh, yeah. Well, I hope so, anyway. Why? What's he done? Nothing. He, he hasn't done anything. I just worry about him, that's all. I just think it's a lot to take on. 
What? Harry and Emma. Rich, Harry's mine. He's my son. And I love Emma to bits as well. Is that why you're doing it, to be Harry's mum? No. I mean, I understand totally, but it is. If someone else had custody of Beth... Rach, I'm not with him to get Harry back. I'm with him because I love him. He's brilliant. He... He's dead funny and clever. A good laugh. When he's retired, you won't even be 40. I don't care. His wife only died a few months ago. Her ex-wife, they were divorced, remember? And you've just come out of a nightmare relationship yourself. Yeah, which has made me realise how good things are with Max. Does your mum know you're living here? Yeah. What does she say? Not much. She didn't want me to marry Tim, no. Neither did my nan. They both don't think it'll last. What about your dad? He's dead. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, I knew that. I'll ask my brother as well. They were both in an accident. How long ago? Two years. It's anniversary tomorrow. I don't want me to tell people about it, cos... I'd really go all sympathetic. Must be weird, not having a proper family. Well, I've got my nan, my nan Nicky. It's not the same, though, is it? I bet you miss your mum. Yeah. Has it got any easier since it happened? Yeah. At first, <laughs> I just went off the rails. I was horrible. And I mean really horrible. Sometimes I don't know how to temper up with me. But now I've got my head together. Have you ever had anyone die in your family? Uh, no. Well, kind of. What do you mean, kind of? You either have or you haven't. Well, I sort of lost someone recently. A baby. What? I had an abortion. You don't think it's too soon? Oh. Rach, what does it matter how long we've been going out with each other? I love them, whether we've been going out for six weeks or six years. Do you, though? I mean, really, are you really that into him? Yeah, I am. I want to spend the rest of my life with him. There's nothing I can say to that. I think I know what the answer's going to be. I'm going to say yeah. Mori got pregnant. It was a nightmare. I had you down at the school, Gee. What did your mum and dad say? They went mad. Our Anthony still isn't talking to me. I tell. You just don't look the same. To get pregnant or to have an abortion? Both. Well, it was my first time with anyone. I just got caught out. Oh, bad luck. I was stupid. Sam, whose was it? To an Ellen? Yeah. Really? Go on in. Leo Johnson. What? Leo? You got pregnant to Leo Johnson? My mum wanted me to have it, but... At your age, is it? I know, yeah. I think I did the right thing, but I don't know. I mean, a baby's dead, isn't it, because of me? Because I was too selfish to bring it up. Oh, I don't see what the problem is. I mean, it's your body. Yeah, but does it give me a right to kill a baby? You folks Catholics. Yeah. You figures. <laughs> it wasn't a baby. It was just a bunch of cells. What do you reckon? When are you 16? Next month. You're still at school? Yeah. I want to go to uni one day. Well, there's no way you could have done that with a baby. No. Are you seeing anyone? Specky Murray. No chance. Leo was a one-off. You could do with some contacts. Do you think? Yeah. Men don't make passes at girls who wear glasses. And... You could do it like a bit less biffy clothes. Well, I did get some new stuff a couple of months ago, but I haven't worn them since. Why? Because the night I did it with Leo, I feel like my mum and dad would be looking at me. As if they're going to remember what you had on. They're being dead strict now. I can't even move. They're always having a go at me. Hang on. You're nearly 16. You can leave home if you want. I couldn't leave home. Yeah, you could. And that's what your mum and dad have got to realise. 
that you're an adult, you can do what you want and wear what you want, and it's got nothing at all to do with them. Jack, I'm sorry about before. I didn't mean to be negative. I know. I just want you to be happy. Well, I am. Jackie Farnham. <laughs> Mrs. Jackie Farnham. <laughs> it's mad, isn't it? I can't wait to tell Mike, can we? Well, actually, do you mind keeping it to yourself for each? It's just, I've only just decided, and I want to get my own head round it first, so. Okay. Do you think it'll be a long engagement? Don't know. Well, let me know when you're going to tell your dad. I'll make sure I'm out. All right. I'm absolutely yeah. dreading it. He's already caused World War Three, and that's just because we're going out with each other. Well, he'll have to accept Mike to be getting married. Do you reckon? Well, he can't not go to his only daughter's wedding. What if he's here for it? How do you mean? Well, his trial's coming up soon, isn't it? What, what if he goes to prison? Do you really think he will? Well, I don't know, but it could happen, couldn't it? Rach, what would I do? I couldn't get married without me dad. <sighs> You're not still at that window. Well, where the hell is she? I mean, it doesn't take two and a half hours to walk around the school, pick up an envelope, then walk back again, does it? Well, maybe she's gone somewhere with her mates. She better hadn't have. Unless she's failed a lot of them. Oh, don't say that. She wouldn't do anything stupid, would she? She's been under a lot of pressure. <sighs> Adele, where have you been? No one asked us to wait around. Your dad's been worried sick. So I was talking to a mate. What's the problem? The problem is you said you'd come straight back. Have you got your results? <sighs> Three A's and five B's? You're joking! Oh, Adele! And you thought I'd screwed them up? Get in there! I knew you could do it! Oh, that is brilliant! They're only exams. It's no big deal. I knew I'd pass. Maybe he'll get off my case now. Maybe. Yeah. Got a jam tart? Ta. So, how's the flat? It's great. Still getting on with Nisha? Yeah, she's all right. I'm just all right. No, she's a good laugh. She's not got that history with her that we've got, that's all. I wish we and Mike had a place for her own. I hate living with his dad. Don't blame you. I don't think we'll ever be able to move out, though. We just can't afford it. You think Jackie would slip you a few bob? She's meant to, isn't she? We don't want to rely on other people. We want to pay our own way. So what does she have to say for herself? Nothing. Big romance still on, is it? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. You think so? Well, no, it is. What's happened? Nothing. Rach, I can tell when you're lying, it's written all over your face. What's gone on? Has he dumped her? No. Well, what then? Oh, look, I can't tell you, all right? It ain't fair they seem to keep secrets from people. Secrets? What secrets? Is she moving in with them? No. Well, yeah. But it's either one or the other. Well, she will be, eventually. Eventually? No, tell me she's not. Oh, don't say anything, Katie. Please don't say anything. She's marrying them. She asked me not to tell anyone. Well, what's the big secret? I don't know. She just wants to keep it quiet. She doesn't want me to know, you mean? You can tell her I couldn't care less about Max Farnham. She's welcome to. But the two of them live happily ever after. Hello. Hiya. You still mad? No. I'm sorry, I'm... It's all right. It's just that you were going on and me. I was doing me head in. I know. No, I just wanted just to get sorted, that's all. I know, and I will. Any luck? Take a wild guess. No. No. Nope. Not unless I want to wipe old people's backsides 24-7. Tim, promise me you won't go to prison. What? Just promise me. What are you on about? I couldn't stand it if you did. Why do you think I'm going to go back to prison? Because of the gun. You got Ron Dixon that gun, and if the biddies find out, they'll throw away the key. Soto's been arrested. What? The other day. So does that mean that you're next? Ron told him he got the gun off Soto, and then he found a load of gear in his flat. So does that mean that they're not going to connect you to it? No, I'm in the clear. Tim, that's brilliant. Why didn't you tell me? Because I was sorting it. You didn't need to know. Oh, Tim, I've been worried sick. So stop panicking about me going to prison, eh? OK. Oh, yeah. Yeah, somebody can't go. 
Not on. Katie, if you've got something to say, say it to me face. Which one? Oh, do you know what? Forget it. I'm past pulling hair on the playground. Oh, yeah, you've seen everything, haven't you? Now you're an old married woman. What? Do you think you'll make it down the aisle this time, or who told you? Oh, need I ask? Susanna Morrissey was right. You are one ruthless bitch. And she's barely cold in a grave and you're already jumping into a bed. You'd stop at nothing to get what you want. Jackie, I'm really sorry. I must remember that next time. Motormouth Rachel covers for the echo in her spare time. It just slipped out. What's the big secret, anyway? You're embarrassed? No, really. I would be betting someone old enough to be my father, who's had more women than I've got dinners. You don't know what you're talking about. I wonder why. Let me think. Oh, that's it. You get the kid yourself for 30 grand back on a freebie. Katie, don't. Harry has got nothing to do with it. Katie, come on. Oh, do me a favour. You've been crying on my shoulder about him for the last year. I'm Manny and Max because I love him. You don't love anyone but yourself. Um, Jackie. What is it with you, eh? Are you jealous or something? Come on, come in the bar. Come on, I'll get you a drink. Get on. I want to know what she meant by that. You're jealous because I'm with someone and you're not. Oh, yeah, that's right. My fellas always seem to end up dying on me, don't they? Your dad made sure of that. Come on, let's leave it, eh? You just can't stand to see me happy with someone who I want to spend the rest of my life with, can you? At least you get the opportunity. It wasn't my fault. No, but you've made up for it since. Come on, let's leave it. That's enough. It wasn't my fault, OK? And I am jealous. I'm jealous as hell, cos thanks to your dad, I'm never going to have what you've got. Casey, it was an accident, right? Come on, John. Dell? Yeah? Your dinner's on the table. <sighs> I'm gonna have to get back to work. Surely you've got time for a sandwich. <sighs> Ham butties and a trifle in the fridge for afters. Mmm. Where's your glasses? I don't know. I left them upstairs somewhere. Well, you better go and get them. You strain your eyes. I'm all right. I can see. No problem. That one's the pepper, Dad. Where are you going? Nowhere. Why are you wearing makeup? I'm not. Yes, you are. It's all smudged around your eyes. Where? There. You look like a panda. That's better. You look like Ardell now. And in future, leave your glasses on. The optician says you have to wear them all the time. Unless I get contacts. Contact lenses? Yeah. Why do you want them? Just do. Come on, Sally. Dell, no can do. Why not? Well, do you know what must they cost? They're not that expensive. They're certainly not cheap. Oh, well, I hate these. There's nothing wrong with them. Please. No. Please, it's my birthday on Friday. Couldn't you get me them for that? We've already got you something. We'll take it back. No! I'm sorry, love. We just can't afford them. Well, thanks for nothing. <sighs> I wanted to get us a bottle of champagne. That was my plan. Put the kids to bed and... low lighting and soft music and the big announcement. I messed that up, didn't I? Who cares? Hey, at least it's a yes. I wish all this wasn't going on with Casey. You know, it taints everything. It'll resolve itself in the end. Give a look at me crying buckets. These should be tears of happiness. Well, I'm still in a state of shock. Really? Were you surprised? Oh, absolutely. I was surprised that I had the nerve to ask you and amazed that you said yes. All that Casey says is not true, you know. What bit? About me marrying you because of Harry. I know. I'm actually marrying you because you're minted. <laughs> well, that's all right, then. What are we going to do about me dad, Max? Do you think he'll ever accept us? Not the way he's been carrying on lately. Oh, maybe once we're married. Actually, I've been thinking, you know, his trial's coming up. What if he goes to prison? He won't. But, Max, what if he does? It was self-defence. I can't get married without my dad. You'll be there. But we don't know that for sure, do we? I don't want to take the chance. So, what are you saying? Can we do it as soon as possible? What soon? Two months? Six months? Really soon. In the next couple of weeks. <sighs> well, yeah, all right, if that's what you want. Do you mind? All I want to do is make you happy. I'll get a licence sorted out first thing. I wish you to tell me what was going on. There was nothing you could do. No, well, because it saved me a few sleepless nights. But I didn't want to worry you. From now on, I want to know. 
I don't think I'm a grass do you? For setting the saucer up? Couldn't care less. There's nothing else I could do, you know. Tim, you can do what you want as far as I'm concerned. Class as many people up as you like. As long as you stay out of prison. Hiya, Dad. What do you want? Well, I've come to talk to you. Wasting your breath. Dad, hang on. Ron! What are you doing? Come on, Ron, open the door. I've got nothing to say to you. You can't just carry on like, pretending that this isn't happening. Can't I? No. And that's why we've come over, to try and make you see sense. Yeah, well, if it's about you and him, forget it, cos I'm not going to change my mind. Oh, Dad, will you just listen to what we've got to say? Me and Max... More than love, whether you like it or not. And we wanted you to be the first to know. We want everyone to know how serious we are. Know what? We're getting married. <sighs> I'm not going to let me dad and his stupid prejudices come between me and you. Jackie, he hates me. What did that old battle axe have to say? Marty, why don't you ask the old battle axe yourself? What's he done now? He hasn't done anything. Please, just tell me, will you? I'm your sister. I think you and me need to talk. Where Mr Ben meets Rhubarb. Do not miss the 100 Greatest Kids TV shows Monday at 8.30. Next tonight on 4, Rachel wants a squeeze, please, in Friends. of mine is marrying Max Farnham. What the hell is she playing at? She's only been seeing him for a few weeks. Well, there's no point in you getting yourself all wound up about it. What are we going to do? There's nothing we can do. You saying you think Jackie should marry him? No, of course not. It's all happening far too fast. But shouting and screaming about it isn't going to help. It didn't when you found out they were going out, did it? No, but it did make me feel a hell of a lot better. The worst thing you can do is tell her she's making a mistake. So what am I supposed to do? Walk it up the aisle, paint a smile on my face while she marries that sleaze ball. What's she trying to do, Anth? Give me another heart attack. Maybe she thinks that facing trial for murder isn't bad enough. Oh, Max, it's fantastic. You sure? It's gorgeous. You don't want to choose something else? No way, I love it. It's not too flashy? As if it is dead classy. <sighs> I knew there was a reason I was marrying you. Yeah, well, that's if ever there is a wedding. Max, just stop right there. I'm not gonna let me dad and his stupid prejudices come between me and you. What kind of wedding is it gonna be if your father stays away? Look, I'll go and see him this morning on my own. I'll make him see sense. Not gonna change his mind. Oh, isn't he? Jackie, he hates me. Maximilian, read your future wife's lips. I can handle it. My dad won't be a problem, okay? Eight O levels. Didn't she do well? GCSEs. What? That's what they're called now. All oh, right. What are you doing for tea? Shepherd's pie. You gonna have some? Will Marty be there? Of course. Uh, then I'll say no. You're going to go home as soon as he gets in. Well, we're not exactly getting on at the moment, are we? And what about me? I'm stuck here in the middle with you two at each other's throats. He caused it. And you're carrying it on. It's your husband who's got a problem, Diane, not me. Then why don't you stay? Okay, I'll stay. Good. But if he says one word, one word, I'm going home. Of course, Mum, that's fair enough. Because I shouldn't have to put up with that. Not at my age. No, I know, Mum. You're right. So I'll stay. But for you and the kids, I don't see why you should suffer. Mmm. What are you making? Veg chilli. Yes. Hey. When's it going to be ready? I'm starving. 
Got until Nicky gets home from work, which is about five o'clock. Nicky? Yeah, I've been vice around for the tea tonight. Why are you joking, aren't you? Why? You should know why. It's not a birthday, is it? No. It's my dad's and Jason's anniversary. We need to be together. Can I help? No. How'd it go? Usual bull. It's school, not a business. That Mr Jones, he just thinks everything's about money. Are they still saying they're going to open seven days a week? Yeah. Great, innit? In a year's time, I could be working nights. My mum called around this afternoon. <sighs> St Bridget. What did that old battle axe have to say? Marty, why don't you ask the old battle axe yourself? Hey, Mike, you're good on computers, aren't you? Well, I wouldn't say that, like, I know the basics. Here a sec. I'm trying to send an email to someone, but I can't get it to work. Let's have a look. No, no, you can't um, read it. It's uh, private. Why well, do you expect me to sort it, then? Um, well, how do you close it down? Let's just have a look. No! Oh, I'm not going to read what you've written. Look, it doesn't matter. Just forget about it. It's all right. Suit yourself. Stupid thing. Hello, eh? Christine. Where's my little Olga called it then? What have you got in your sack for the Christmas? Plenty, and it needs emptying right now. <laughs> oh. It's got to be desperate. So, have you had your dinner? Starving. Well, I tell you what, I'll get Billy to put a steak on for you. Rachel, go on. You have an out? Um, I'm having Cumberland sausage, but it'll have to wait until we're on our own, won't it? <laughs> hey, it's got a load of gear here. What type of gear? Well, you know, dresses, jeans, ex warehouse stuff. Let's have a look. How much? Eight quid to you. Oh, now that's nice. And that? Well, go try them on. All right, so in for a second. Hey, Mike. Hang that up behind the bar, will you? Since when did I start working here? Well, then get the little woman to do it. Where's Leanne? In the office, trying the latest Paris fashions. Well, you better move some of the stuff before somebody spills something on it. Hey, have a look at that lot. Straight off the catwalk, then. Where's your Tim? He's just upstairs in the shower. He'll be down in a minute. Oh, no, look at that picture. <laughs> How tacky is that? I don't think it does. <laughs> so come on, where's your room? Is this here? Yeah, but don't go in, it's a mess. <sighs> wow. Different style, eh? It just needs a tidy and that's all. It's not exactly the Ritz, is it? Yeah, but it does us. Haven't you even got a telly? No, we make our own entertainment. Hey, mate. Why the hell are you living here? Because I want to. Because you want to what? You want to move from rented room to rented room for the rest of your life. All right. Oh, yeah. It's grown out yet, Emma. It's just coming. Cool. What do you think? Is it me? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's lovely. Well, there's a big bag of them there, Rage. Get stuck in. Turn your computer off. I think you and me need a talk. I'll take these upstairs and hang them on the maiden for you. This is going to be ready in five minutes. I won't be long. Excuse me. Being so childish and talk to her. She's the one not talking to me. <sighs> Grow up, Marty. I don't know why I'm getting all the blame. Dad. Hmm. You no know one wanted new contact lenses. Now we've been through all that, and the answer's no. You've only had those glasses for six months, but I hate them. <sighs> There's nothing wrong with them. <sighs> Men don't make passes at girls who wear glasses. And any man who makes a pass at you, I knock his block off. Has our Steve been skitting you again? No. What then? Nothing. Just get off my back, will you? What if I pay for them myself? For crying out loud. Dell, these lenses cost hundreds. 
Especially for a prescription like yours. There's no way you could afford to pay for them yourself. Well, what if you lend me the money? And then I could pay you back week by week, out my wages from the garage. Oh, yeah? And when would that finish? The year 2010? Depends how much they cost. No, I'm sorry, mate. You've no chance. I'm not asking you to buy them. We haven't got it, Dell. If we had it, we'd lend it to you. You know we would. Because of the IVF. Yeah. Great. Sorry, love. See, I can't believe that you do something like this. Well, our Lance was going to leave. What, so you set Bev up? You lied to her, made her go on the run. You make it sound worse than what it is. She's got a kid, hasn't she? I'll tell you what, girl, you have plumbed new depths. I didn't mean it to get this far. It just snowballed. And you're sitting pretty running this place. Yeah, and I couldn't have done it without your help. So, so what are you going to do? I don't know yet. Your Lance know what's gone on? No, you can't tell Lance, no way! He'd never speak to me again! Oh, so basically, you asked me to lie for you now? Yeah. Well, that's put me on the horns of a dilemma, that has. I know I've done a bad thing, and I shouldn't be asking you to cover for me, but I'm desperate. I'd probably get arrested if all this came out. Well, look, I just, I don't know what to do, I really don't. Don't tell anybody, please, Christy. Please, I'm begging you. I'll have to think about it. I'll do anything if you just keep your mouth shut. Whatever you want. Anything. Anything? Well, actually, there is something I've been meaning to ask you. Go on. Well, a mate of mine's got a load of continental beers he's trying to get rid of. And where did he get them? A continent. We're only meant to order from the brewery, you know that. But they're going for a song? No, it's too risky. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose you're right. I mean, Bev's gonna have enough on her play, isn't she? Especially when I email her and tell her what's been going on. So you're gonna tell her? Well, I don't get the impression that we're batting for the same side here. Well, how many bottles has he got then? A few hundred. Oh, I don't suppose it'll be that hard to get through them then. That's more like it. I'll tell Paul to make some space in the cellar. Only. Oh, yeah. A couple of lads are coming over later. So get Billy to throw in a few steaks, will you? How many? Six. No problem. Nice one. Hey, you scratch my back, I scratch yours. No way come up yet? Yeah, no. Have you been looking like? Of course I have. He goes to the job centre every day. Can't live here forever though, can you? No. Once Tim gets a job, we're going to start saving for a deposit on a flat. So you're all going to be here forever, then? What's that supposed to mean, eh? Nothing. No, come on. Oh, wait, Tim, can't you take a joke? Yeah, Nicky. Pass your glass and I'll fill it up. No, you finish that. I'll open a new one. Um, we haven't got any more. Once I've bought the food and that. Oh, wait, well, I'll go to the offie and get another one. No, we've already bought us a bottle. So what, I'll buy another one? Tim. I'll go. Yeah, we'll get out of that. Thanks, Nick. I'll pay it back once I get my wages. I don't want it back. You bought all the food. See us in a minute. Thanks, Nick. It's all right. <clears throat> uh, we've got to have a bevy tonight of all nights, haven't we? Can't believe it's what? Two years. Oh, Jason, I'll be coming for 24 now. We managed to Katrina. Probably lucky escape. Oh, don't be mean, you. Dream was all right. So, come on, tell me how are things really going. I mean, Tim. Great. Honest. Yeah, I'm not blind. You've been like a different person these last few weeks. I haven't. You know, I've just look at you. You're absolutely knackered. Got bags under your eyes. You're wearing the same old gear day in, day out. I'm sorry, but that's not the Emily Shadwick I know and love. And the old lady. What's going on, Em? Nothing. Hang on. It's Nicky here. Yeah. You have to keep pretending to me that everything in the garden's all rosy, you know. It is. You're not pregnant, are you? Do I look like I've got mug tattoos on my forehead? Well, what is it, then? It's nothing. 
Is it Sam? Is he in trouble? No. What's he done now? He hasn't done anything. Um, please, just tell me, will ya? I'm your sister. I'm on your side, do you remember? It is a favour for someone. He was only helping someone out. Helping someone out will help. It's nothing. Um, just tell me. He got something that he shouldn't have got, but he didn't know what was going to happen. He was just out trying to help Ron. Ron? Ron Dixon? Forget it. Look, just forget it. Ron Dixon? It was Tim who gave him the gun, wasn't it? He didn't know he was going to use it. Oh, Emily, I've got to get you out of this. Your appointment's with the specialist tomorrow, isn't it? Yeah. And what does that entail? Er, uh, we're not quite sure, are we? All we know is it's going to cost at least another grand. I suppose it's going to go through our options with us. Tell us the odds are stacked against me getting pregnant. All the usual depressing statistics. I don't know why you're putting yourself through it again. I really don't. Oh, we've just got this masochistic streak. You know, we just love failure, don't we, Danny? There's no need to be facetious. Isn't there? You know why we're doing it, Mum? We want a baby. Mum, we've had a nightmare. What's up? I took my glasses off and they must have fell. And because I couldn't see, I stepped on them. Adele, they snapped. What the hell are you playing at? Why can't you just accept that I'm happy with him? Well, you might be now, but it's a new relationship. You've only just got together. It's only a year ago you were going to marry Nathan. Yeah, but that would have been a mistake. We were miles apart. And you and Max aren't. Look, I know what you're thinking. He's old, posh, a divorcee. But I've seen the other side to him. I've seen the fella who nearly has a heart attack every time one of the kids falls over in the park, who reads some bedtime stories every night before they go to bed. It's still no basis for a marriage. And yet I've spent the last few years feeling lost and lonely, making money, drifting from the wrong guy to the wrong guy, making a mess of things. And then my dad goes and shoots me best mate's fella. And who was there for me when Casey bin me off, eh? Who makes me feel safe and warm and loved? Who makes me feel that I've finally come home? Max. Yeah. Why can't me dad just take my word for it? I've got to get him to change his mind. What are you trying to say? That I did it on purpose? Um, yeah. I am, actually. She wouldn't do something like that, wouldn't she? No, I wouldn't. Tell him, Mum. Well, it is a bit of a coincidence. You'll have to get me some new ones or new contacts. We can't afford new ones. Well, you'll have to. I can't see without them. I'll have to fix them. No way. Have you got any idea how long they will put him away for something like this? He won't go to prison. Of course he will. He would have been seen. There'll be fingerprints and all kinds. Well, if you've already got someone for it, that's also who Tim met in prison. Ron Dixon gave his name into the busies. He's already been arrested and everything. They're not looking for no one else. He is an accessory to murder. He's not. He supplied the gun, Emily. Why the hell do you ever go anywhere near him? Look, he hasn't done nothing wrong. Are you that stupid? Look, he did run a favour. What happens after that? It's got nothing at all to do with him. What have you been saying, eh? She asked me what was wrong. It's nothing that I didn't already know. What are you doing? Emily is coming home with me. I'm not. Oh, you are. Tell her, Tim. What's going to happen if she stays here with you, eh? Some no mark, some ex con scally, a gun runner who's going to end up in prison the next six months. I'm going nowhere. Well, you're having a laugh, aren't you? You've done something terrible. You helped Ron Dixon kill a 23 year old lad. Get out! Not without Emily. She's not going anywhere. I'm not going to stand back and watch her ruin the rest of her life. I don't even know what you're talking about. I know. The sooner she's away from you, the better. What? This isn't about her. It's about you. You're a jealous man eating cow. Can't stand the fact that her sister's happy and she's not. Shut up! Oh, yeah. Yeah, and I'll tell you one thing. I love Emily, and I'll never make a laughing stock of her the way Jerome Johnson did of you. <gasps> Emily, I'm going home. You come on with me. Anyone for a cuppa? No, thank you. Yeah, go on. Dal? No. Are you just going to sit there with a the cob on all night? My nose is killing me. It's digging in. It's your own fault for snapping them. If you coloured the plaster in, probably no one would notice, you know. 
I look like a laughing stock. Oh, come on, Del. It's not that bad. Well, can't you get them on the National Health? I mean, she is still at school. I don't want glasses. I want contacts. Will you let it drop? I said I'd pay for them myself. Well, if that's the case, why can't she have them? Hang on. Can you remind me, has this got anything to do with your mother? Because we haven't got the money to lend her in the first place. Even if they did, they wouldn't spend it on me. What's that supposed to mean? Nothing. <sighs> do we have to be in each other's throats? Michelle's got them, and Jessica Deary. I'm sick of looking like the class geek. Will you shut up about contact lenses? You're not having them, right? And you're not having them till we can afford them. Till you spend every penny we've got getting me mum pregnant. I'm sick of having to go without. I hate this house. You go into me room. Ron? Ron, come on. Hang on, this has got to be sorted out. Hey, you're not marrying her. That's it, Look, sorted. Jackie is really upset. She needs your blessing. Well, she can whistle for it. I beg your pardon? Look, if she marries you, she'll be making the biggest mistake of her life. Don't you care about how she feels? What? Are you that pig-headed that you won't set aside your own prejudices for your own daughter's sake? Get out of here. No, no I'm, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. Move. No, Ron. Ron, come on, don't be ridiculous. Ron. You right? Yeah. And Madam's still upstairs. Yeah. I think she's running a bath. I'll go up in a minute, see if I can smooth things over. <sighs> Sorry about all that with your mother. Oh, she rubs me up the wrong way. I suppose we're all a bit tense at the moment, aren't we? Yeah. Mart. Are we doing the right thing? With what? The IVF. I mean, why should the kids go without? Are we just being selfish? <sighs> no, of course we're not. We've got to give it our best shot. I mean, I'd hate to think of them having less than other kids because of me. Because of us. Maybe we should just forget the whole thing. Are you serious? Yeah. Well, let's see what the bloke says tomorrow and we can make a proper decision. You can't go round blabbing to people, Em. It's not people. It was my sister. It doesn't matter. When I gave that gun to Ron, I never ever thought he'd use it. I know it seems stupid, but I'm being honest. I just thought he'd feel a lot safer if he had it with him in the house. And you know Nicky's right. I am an accessory, and I'd be well banged up if anyone ever found out. That's why you can't go around telling stuff to people, OK? OK. I love you, you know. I love you, Tim. Come here. Hey, Anf, guess who just collared me? Only Cradle Snatch and Max Farn and me had the gold to... You took your time. I thought you'd be back ages ago. Jackie's come to see you. What for? Oh, come on, Dad, you know what for? You and Farnham? I don't want to know. Cup of tea, Anth? No, thanks. Dad, will you stop trying to pretend that this isn't happening? What have you got against him? Where would you like me to start? The man's a model. What? Jackie, he's nearly twice your age. Oh, so what? Oh, my it's disgusting. Farrell in his late 40s, he's chasing round after a 20-odd-year-old girl. I love him, Dad, and he loves me. Love? What do you know about love? You've never been in love in your life. Oh, now what do you know? All you've got to do is look at the fellas you've had. Lord Snooty and Rocky Marciano. Max is different. Yeah, he's Hugh Hefner. You don't know him. I've lived next door to him for ten years. Can we just calm down? He's kind and he's thoughtful. Don't make me laugh. He is. Why can't you just accept it? Because I can't stand back and watch my daughter throw her life away on a waster. I love him, Dad. No, you might think you love him. I do. You've only been seeing him for five minutes. What difference does that make? Look, can't you slow things down a bit? No. Look, just give it six months, see how it goes. We can't. Why? Why can't you? Because I want you there to give me away. You think I'm going down? No, I don't. Don't you? I don't. She thinks they're going to send me to prison. There's no way I'm ever going to approve of Max Farnham. 
I've lived round here long enough years to see his sordid comings and goings. Have you got a date? Friday the 14th of September. He saw Mr Dixon that gun. Tim O'Leary. You knew you were never going to be told miracles would happen. Crossing my fingers statistically would be more successful. Me and Max are getting married. And that's all coming up in tomorrow's Brookside at 8 o'clock. Tonight's on for a unique opportunity to see the excavation of an Anglo-Saxon site as it happens. Time Team is next. like Gandhi's flip-flops. <laughs> Might you go around and see Jackie later? What for? You were a bit hard on her. Yeah, well, she reckons I'm going down for murder. I'm sure she didn't mean it like that. Why else would she rush headlong into this marriage? She wants you to be there. Yeah, before I go to prison. Or maybe she meant before the trial because you're going to be under so much pressure and it'll take up so much of your time. I know what I heard. Your approval would mean so much to her. She loves you. <laughs> Looks like it. And she loves Max. Rubbish. You didn't hear the way Jackie was talking yesterday. She was passionate. She swears Max is the man for her. There's no way I'm ever going to approve of Max Farnham. I've lived round here long enough years to see his sordid comings and goings. He changes women like the flame and seasons. The thought of him and our Jackie together makes me feel physically sick. And if my daughter can't give me air support, why should I give a father's blessing? She can whistle for it. Not being a great granny today, then? I'm not cleaning today, if that's what you mean. Could have saved yourself the bus fare and stayed over. I wouldn't want to put you out. Anyway, I've come to look after my grandchildren. You are still going to the clinic today. Yeah, yeah. I can look after myself. That appointment's not till the savvy. And Adele can get Aunt's tea, surely. She's still poisoning. Hi, Nin. Hello, love. Morning. Mm. At last, a friendly face. Nin, have you bought me birthday present yet? I was going to take you into town tomorrow and buy you something nice. Well, I want contact lenses. She's not having them. Just cos you won't buy me them. Because you broke your glasses on purpose. Sticky tape suits you, Dal. Hiya. Where have you been? I woke up this morning, you weren't there. Oh, just sealing a bit of business, you know, doing a recce. Right. Well, come on, aren't you going to quiz me? Oh, Max. I still feel really bad about what I said to me dad. It came out totally wrong. I might just as well have said to him, if I don't get married quick style, you're going to get banged up and you'll miss it. I can't blame him for sending me packing. Look, he's got to see that you're doing this first and foremost because you care for him. He'll come round. Will he? Well, <laughs> he'll have to when you tell him when it is. <gasps> have you got a date? Friday the 14th of September. But that's only in a few weeks. I never said she's away, but... Well, I could only get the venue that day. I was lucky, actually. Oh, and the licence will be ready to pick up that morning. So where does it? Ah, surprise. Tell me. <laughs> well, if I did that, it wouldn't be a surprise, would it? Oh, Max, come on, tell me. My lips are sealed. I don't know what to say. Well, you could say, I hope you're not having second thoughts, because I've booked the registrar as well. Oh, Max, I am made up. But what's my dad going to say about all this? So what's the next step of the IVF? Have you got to have all the injections again? No, this time it's more natural. As natural as frozen embryos can be. Mum, well, you know I hate the thought of you being prodded and pushed in all directions. Have they got to collect more eggs? No, thank goodness. They stored some from last time. Which went in a big freezer. And hopefully some of them will survive the thaw and to be put back inside me. 
after they've been fertilised by my dad. Where's Where's Steve today? I was doing a fodder. A what? Fixing cars for cash. Oh, right. And by the way, young man, an embryo's and eggs has already been fertilised. There's four left in the freezer from last time. Sounds much easier than before. It is. But I'd have a better chance of getting pregnant if I went through the whole thing again. Why can't you? Because this... It's called frozen embryo replacement. It's half the price. Well, good luck with it. Well, it won't happen today. They're just going to clue us up about the whole process. They've got to wait for my next period before they can start. Mum. Yeah? I can put up with my glasses for the time being. A baby's much more important. Bye. Bye, love. You took someone's life. Maybe Jackie's got a point. Maybe she's the only one in the family who's actually facing up to this. She can't afford to think like that. You're the only real thing that Mr Dixon's got keeping him together. What a responsibility. But you won't always have this much, Elsa. We haven't even got to the trial yet. Yeah, and you'll come out the other side with the right verdict. You think? You've got to see it like that, for your husband's sake. I mean, I know if Mike was in Mr Dixon's shoes, I'd be there for him every step of the way. I suppose you're right. Anthea's out and Mike's in the physio. Dad, hang on. Will you just hear me out? I've got no time for backpedalling. What's said is said. Then I said it wrong. I never meant for one second that I thought you'd get done for me. There's no way. So why are you rushing into this marriage, then? See, so you've already got the ring. I was only thinking that the trial might go on for months, so we'd never know when you'd be available. My solicitor reckons it'll take a week. A fortnight tops. Didn't realise. So you'll call the wedding off. Now you know the facts. Well, we've booked the venue, Saturdays. So, uh, when is the happy day? Next month, the 14th. It's handy, that. A few weeks before the trial. I mean, you wouldn't want me walking up the aisle with all hands whispering around your old fella being banged up for murder, would you? Dad, you're not going down. Jackie, you're a clever girl. Hide a gun. Even if the jury throw out the murder charge, there'll still be consequences. Now, you thought, let's get this wedding over quick, give you an alpha and a good do before the trial, and I'd be dead grateful. All emotion. Even forget the fact that you're getting hits to that who are master fan. It's not like that. I can just hear the two of you now. Let's set the date and Ron will have to come round. Well, I'll tell you something. I'd rather be banged up than see you married to that man. Clocks, I am late for my shift. It's all right, she's on a business lunch. She's been gone about two hours already. Where have you been? I'm trying to talk some sense into our Emily. <laughs> What's she done now? I'm well, not here. It's him. And Emily wants me to apologise to him. <laughs> Fat chance. Why? I gave Tim a crack last night. I slapped him right across his face. And it's the least he deserved the scally little get. What's he done? What do you mean, apart from robbing, breaking into houses, selling your father in law a gun? I mean, I would have thought prison would make him sick of hanging around low life scum. He sold Mr. Dixon that gun. Tim will hear it. Yeah, he could have one of the egg cases he was inside with. I'll reach out to him so you never even knew. Katie, you are right? Top of the world. Look, can you spare five minutes? There's no one on reception. Oh, Katie, wait a sec, please. Um, me and Max of Saturdays, 14th of September. You don't hang around. Look, you know what I'm going to ask you. Please, will you come to the wedding? Why? To catch the bouquet. Get all giddy up. It's me next. It's not going to happen, is it? Me and Clint never even got the chance to set a date. But it means so much to me. Can't we just put our differences to one side, even if it's just for the day? I can't get married without you being there. I'm sorry, but I can't switch my jolly button on and off like that. Katie, please be happy for me. Happy? Congratulations, on these, on these, on these. I'm sorry, I can't make it, but in the end. Hey, what's going on? Please, yeah. I can't get my head round it. So Tim gave Mr. Dixon that gun. But he was supplied by this Soto one. Yeah. The head the ball who's now being held in custody on a firearm possession. The busy's raided his flat and they found a gun in there. 
Ron must be well relieved Soto's been charged, because that's a lad that he named. But not him? No, completely off the hook. I mean, two minutes out of prison. Not as he tims up to his dirty old tricks. Anything but trying to earn an honest living. I mean, I do know women aren't Emily or skin, but God, so am I. I'm in to my eyeballs. I've got student loans there, I won't be able to pay back in a million years. And did Mr Dix never mention anything to the police? No. He just threw that Soto's name into the frame. So it looks like Tim's off the hook. Do you know what? I have a good mind to grass on him yourself. You can't do that. Mr Dix not been even more trouble if the police knew he lied. Leaving Tim thinking the crime really does pay. I wish our Emily had never clapped eyes on him. So he won't marry in that little toe rag. It's got to be the worst thing that she's ever done. I want to see him locked up again. If only to keep him away from Emily. You won't really tell the police, will you? No. Emily would never speak to me again. Does Mike know anything about this? I don't know. Him and Tim have been really pally lately, though, haven't they? I'll pay for them flowers. Oh, it's all right. It wasn't you chucking them about. It's my family's fault. She's so angry. Not that anyone meant to hurt her. You used to be such good mates, didn't you? Yeah. Not anymore, though. She won't come to me wedding. Your wedding? Yeah. Me and Max are getting married. Won't come. Well, I can't blame her really. She's my best mate. And my dad won't come either. Doesn't approve of my choice of bridegroom. <laughs> it's hardly surprising. He doesn't understand. Yeah, but you and Max, it's not easy to get your head round, is it? He makes me feel loved and wanted. Sounds good to me. You still single? <laughs> hardly. Married to my dad. What do you mean? Well, since my mum's gone, he needs a lot of attention. Wrapping up in cotton wool. Well, the lucky bill came this morning. I had to hide it from him, because I knew we'd get stressed out because we can't buy it. Still no better, then. Well, he's loads better. It's a lifelong thing, this manic depression. Well, haven't they given him any tablets? Yeah, but they're only doing half the job. Doesn't sound much fun for you, eh? Well, keeps me out of mischief. <laughs> <laughs> I do love me dad, but I just can't see myself looking after him when I'm 50. <laughs> loads of people do, eh? I know. Who's a thought, eh? You and me ending up with middle-aged men. Hey, fancy a swap. Set the date. When? Not. It's a few weeks off yet. Oh, it's too fast. This proves my daughter thinks I'm going down. For life. And she's right. <laughs> I had a gun and I used it. I killed a young lad. <laughs> Panicked and shot him. But I'd even given him a second to back off, get out, or even explain. That's not what I told the police. I know, Anne, but the courts are not just going to slap me on the wrist and tell me not to do it again. They're going to take it seriously, yes, but you are going to get off. I'm not. Oh, Jackie's right. I'm going down for murder because that's what I did. <laughs> and I've seen what it's like when I was on remand and I couldn't handle it then. How am I going to cope with life? You won't get life. I'm going to make sure of that. No use fighting it anymore. Look, this is no time for giving up. Well, you're going to have to, Anthea. You can't wait round for me. I've lost you. You haven't. Yes, I have. You, my family, everything. It's hopeless. Everything you stood to protect on that night, everyone is fighting for you. And the court will realise that you're a decent man, heart and soul, because you did the right thing. I never give Clint time. Oh, come on, stop this. Oh, I was there. I am your only witness. I'm going to stand up in court and tell them that you gave that lad a decent opportunity. Five, ten seconds before you fired. But will they believe you? They'll have no choice. Because you gave him a fair chance, and that's what I'm going to say. I know I've been a bit wobbly lately, but I've been under a lot of pressure as well, not just you. But you'd be perjuring yourself. That's a small price to pay to keep you out of prison. And do you know why? Why? Because I love you. <laughs> I'm 
It's your my only hope. Do you know that? Hey, I mean, this could really save me. I know, love. You're gonna get off. Fancy going upstairs? It's not even Saturday. <laughs> I know, but if we go up and shut the curtains, you'll never know the difference. So, come on, then. What did he say? She... She reckons my age won't be too much of a problem. She's treated other 37-year-olds who've been successful. Well, that's good, isn't it? Well, reading between the lines, if I was any older, I'd have no chance. I'm on the cusp. Rubbish! I've read about 50-year-olds who've had babies through IVF. They were probably all American and loaded, with a dozen embryos each, all stored in mint condition. I'll be lucky if three or even two get the green light and survive the thawing process. She reckons that 25%, that's a quarter of all of them, don't live through the freezing. So how will you know if it's OK? We'll have to phone up the unit on the day they give us for the transfer. How are they transferred? Will it be painful for you? Do you really want to know all this? Are you just being polite? Love, I'm interested, no matter what I think, because it's you. I thought you hated the idea of me being tampered with. Just tell me. They inject the embryo high up into my uterus through a tiny tube, which will just feel uncomfortable. The same sort of process I've been through before that failed. And that's it? No drugs? Cos I'm regular, they know I ovulate naturally, so I don't have to have any hormone-controlled cycle. So it's less complicated than before? Still, it's pointless. Hey, come on, what happened about staying positive? Cos the success rate's rubbish. The embryos might not live, cos they're not as fresh as they would have been if we'd gone back to square one. And the lining of my womb might not be great, so that would mean drug therapy and a longer wait. She's told us the pregnancy rate for old replaced embryos, 17%. Oh, come on, love. You knew you were never going to be told miracles would happen. But by the sound of it, there's still a fighting chance. A tiny chance. Crossing my fingers, statistically, would be more successful. It might work this time. Might. That magic word. Underneath all the jargon, that's all the specialists could really offer me. It's a milestone, this. What? Well, you and me. Actually, having more than two words. <laughs> To be missed, didn't we? Used to be, yeah. I suppose business and friendship never works out. I've learned that one the hard way. You make it sound like we had some kind of playground tiff. Have you forgotten what happened? You stole our money and got gangster drug dealing scum involved in our business. But this is now. I've paid my dues, can't we just forget about the past? We fell out for good reason. I'd like to make it up to you. I'm sorry, Linz. Us being mates is long gone. Thanks. I came to... I thought you might want these back. I didn't know whether I should, because of how you might react. He kept them all. Everyone I sent to him in Spain. They were hidden in a pair of his boxes. I've been sorting out one cupboard a week. I know it sounds daft. Some people can't wait to bag up and bin reminders off, but this way gives me time to let go and remember him. Bit by bit. Did you read them? I had to. To get into my head some of the happiness he, he might have felt. Some of them are filthy. <sighs> I was your age once, you know. Most of them are full of dying to see him next. Me being jealous of all the girls in bikinis I thought he'd be meeting. He was committed to you from the start. I'd have been made up with you as my daughter-in-law. <sighs> have I been over the top giving you these? <sighs> no. I just feel denied. You? Me and Rob? No. Denied at my big day with Clint. Standing up in front of everyone and getting married. Jackie Dixon's going ahead with it, you know. Like nothing's happened. Expecting me to be there clapping and cheering. As if her wedding's going to make me forget that her dad killed my only chance of happiness. Who's she getting married to? <sighs> Max Farnham. Do you know him? Her name rings a bell. She's barely had time to jump out of our Robbie's bed. When's this happening? 
14th of September. Where? I didn't stick around for the details. And you're right to stay away, love. If for nothing else, out of respect for Clint. Both my sons. No luck talking him round, then? I've been getting it from all angles today. Seems like the only person who's want to come to our wedding is Lindsay Corkill. <laughs> what are we doing? Look, we're proving to everyone how committed we are to each other. Who to? No one's going to show. What's the point of getting married if all the people we care about aren't going to be there to witness it? People will be around to see what we've got for years to come. Because that's what we have got. It's not just one day, Jackie. It's, it's a whole future together. How can something that feels so right make so many people unhappy? I've got to ask myself, Max, am I being selfish? Do you love me? Of course I do. Do you love Harry and Emma? Loads. Right then, well, we'll see it through as a family. Everyone else will just have to accept us. Will you stop stuffing yourself with bread? I'm not making any crumbs. Eat what's on your plate. I'm not hungry. And just eat it. I want her to taste mine first, just in case she has poisoned her. Grow up. Pack it in. So when do you go ahead with it all? I guess that's when my next period starts. Maybe we should talk about this when we've finished eating. Oh, whatever suits you, Bridge. Perhaps over supper, if you're staying. Depends if I feel welcome. Doors always open. Like it was for Father Pat. Oh, change the record. <sighs> Marty. Sorry. It's not just you. It's all of yours. Will you hear me out for a second? The specialist said today that the chances of me having a baby through this next IVF step are low. And any stress could make them lower for me. So I really need peace and quiet to make it work for me. If you could stop bickering, it would really help me a lot. Sorry, Mum. We're all behind you, love. And it's Dale's birthday tomorrow, so we should really make an effort, yeah? And we love each other really, don't we? Friday the 14th. I know, love. I don't know, where you? Oh, she's a Dixon, isn't she? I wonder if the invites are in the post. OK. To all of Where's Mike? Not back yet. And Mr Dixon? He's uh, having a nap. Listen, I'm glad we had that chat. It's really helped clear my mind. I'll take it all back. All that stand-by-your-man rubbish. Cos where's Mike now, eh, doing exactly what he pleases that I don't find out? Rach? Did you know who Mr Dixon got the gun from? None of us do. Tim O'Leary. And then Mr Dixon lied to drop some fellow in it. I mean, all that blag about some lad in a pub. You didn't know, did you? At least I'm not the last person in Liverpool to find out. You are. <sighs> it beggars believe this. Lying and keeping secrets to himself again. I had to find out off Nicky Shadwick. And how did she know? Well, Tim O'Leary tells his family everything, obviously. And here's me feeling sorry for Ron. Mike's really let me down this time. I was mortified finding out of my workmate. Oh, no, this is Ron's doing. I'm going to make prison seem like the soft option by the time I've finished with him. I promised you yesterday that I'd purge him myself for you. And then I find out that you've been lying to me again. You know, this is your mum's last chance with the treatment. If it doesn't work this time, that's it. We can't afford any more. Just wish someone would give me a chance. I don't think anyone will. If there's any apologising to be done around here, it's certainly not me. Brookside's back on Friday at 8.30. Well, if yesterday was anything to go by, there should be plenty more exciting finds on day two of Time Team's Hampshire Dig. Join them in the thick of it next on 4. Excuse me. Come on, Anthea. Don't you think this has taken it a bit far? 
I couldn't drop Tim, and it could I? Not after him practically saving your life. Ron, you don't need to explain your reasons. I'm well aware of why you did it. So what's the problem? The problem is that once again you didn't tell me what was going on. That once again you deliberately shut me out and didn't trust me. It's nothing to do with trust. Well, I'm sorry, Ron, but I think it's got everything to do with trust. But maybe that's the difference between us. Anthea, don't do this. I promised you yesterday that I'd perjure myself for you. And then I find out that you've been lying to me again. And again, and again. Well, maybe this time I've had enough. What's up? Nothing. Still fretting about your father? <sighs> yeah, I mean, I know I'm being stupid. No, I'm not stupid about wanting your father to be there on your wedding day. I just don't know what to do to sort it out, and I'm trying not to let it get to me. Look, I know it's hard, but... <sighs> I think you've just got to accept that's the way your father is. Pig-headed and stubborn. You've tried to do everything you can. You tried to talk him round. So maybe I should just let it go. At the end of the day, there's only two people who matter two weeks on Friday, and that's me and you. <sighs> and we're sure we're doing the right thing. Hey, and who knows? Mm. You might have a change of heart last minute. Dozy. <laughs> Thanks, Max. Better get back to doing this. Anytime. Look, Aunt, I'm sorry, but I was just trying to do the best thing for everyone. We're supposed to be a team. That's what marriage is about. Pulling together, not having any secrets. OK, OK, I made a mistake. Yeah, but you're always making mistakes. And I'm the Muggins who's always picking up the pieces. Where are you going? Out. Out where? To clear me head. Anthea, don't be ri... Open it now. Don't you think you should wait till your mum gets home and then you can open them all together? Right. Hey, do you like what Michelle got me? Very nice. Have you not expecting anything from me? I wasn't. Good, so you won't be disappointed then. Will you two pack it in? You know what your mum said last night? She could do without you two sniping all the time. What? Nothing? I said pack it in. You started it. What have I said? Right. That's enough, the pair of you. Come on. You know this is your mum's last chance with the treatment. If it doesn't work this time, that's it. We can't afford any more. So what we've got to do is make sure she gets complete peace and quiet. Which means I don't want you lot stressing her out. So does that mean you'll stop fighting with me, Ned? Hey, any more of that and you're going to spend the rest of the evening in your room. Oh, terrific. Dad, go and see who that is, will you? For my sake, as well as your mum's, don't you think you could make a bit of an effort to get on with Adele? <sighs> this really isn't doing your mum any good, you know? All this constant tension and bickering. Please? Dad? Hello. Reg? Um, just dropping this off. Happy birthday, love. Mwah. Oh, thanks. Well, aren't you going to open it? I'll better wait till I've had my tea. OK. I was, um, wondering if we could have a word on our own. If that's OK with you two. Yes, of course, Bridge. Dale, put the kettle on, will you? Very good measurement. It's the trend continuing. I know from so... <sighs> <laughs> <sighs> Hey, kid. Oh. What's for scran? Whatever's in the cupboard. Oh, right. Get me own tea, then, am I? I'm not really hungry. I need my do the tea every other night. Listen, I don't mind getting my own food. Would have been nice to have a bit of warning, that's all. So what do you want to do? Make a rosa like you did with me mum? No, I'm just saying it would have been nice to know. 
That's all. I mean, what if I'd made plans for tonight? Yeah, and what if I'd made plans? Like what? Well, I don't know. Sarah wants to go out for the night. But you never do. Thanks, Dad. What's up? Nothing. Well, come on, I'm being serious. What have I done? All I've said is you never go out. What's the harm in that? Oh, Dad, will you just leave it, please? See you in a minute. Hi. So how are you? Mm, you know, still feel a bit lost, don't you, Dad? I'm not giving you one. What's wrong? Oh, nothing. Honestly, I'm fine. Well, look, I don't suppose you've got time for a quick coffee. <sighs> Sounds like the best offer I've had all day. Oh. I think the last thing Diane needs at the moment is for us to be at each other's throats the whole time. I couldn't agree more. So what I suggest is, while she gets through the next few weeks, is that we try and be as civil to each other as we possibly can, given the circumstances. Oh, I see. So, uh, you're not actually burying the hatchet. We're just pretending to keep the peace. You can't expect me to brush everything under the carpet and act as if nothing's happened. Well, that's very Christian of you, Bridget, as always. If there's any apologising to be done around here, it's certainly not me. I take it you haven't forgiven me, then, for having to go farther Pat. I'm talking about you pushing a frightened, vulnerable child into having an abortion. Hey, and what about what you and Father Pat were doing to a frightened, vulnerable child, apart from scaring the living daylights out of her and trying to warp her whole life? Oh, yes. And what happens if she comes to you in ten years' time and finds herself in the same position as our dies in now, desperate to have a baby of her own and, and heartbroken because she's thrown her chance away? What kind of argument is that? You're talking about something that might never happen? You think this won't affect her? You think she can just walk away from what she's done and forget all about it? Well, you're doing your best to make sure she never does. She's already scarred for life by what she's done. She made a mistake. Is that what you call it? She made a mistake. And she's paid the price, but I don't see why she's got to spend the rest of her life beating herself up about it. Hey, Bettina. <sighs> if I'm welcome, which I very much doubt, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I said what I said, OK? Apology accepted. Do you want any help? Yeah, go on. What the hell's making a mess of the... Come on, then. So you're written your speech for the wedding of the year, then? I most definitely have not. You're going be fine, aren't you? Not really. You see, Casey, I've got about as much intention of going as you have. Look, is there any way you can try and talk me dad round about the wedding? Oh, you know what your dad's like when he's made his mind up about something? Anyway, you talk to the wrong person. Oh, come on, Andy. If he listens to anyone, it's you. I'm not so sure about that. Have you two as a row? That's really nothing to worry about. I'm a good listener. And there's me bed and you with all my problems. Look, I'm fine, honestly. Not even worth talking about. OK. Hi, Casey. how you were getting on and to say thanks for keeping in touch with me, Mum. It's OK. Look, just fancy going for a drink? No, not in the bar. Somewhere else, then. Well, do you want to go up the flat? <sighs> the flat? I'm on it. It's only for a drink. Well, yeah. Right. Oh, another day, another dollar. So how's married life? It's great. Well, it won't be if you weren't skint all the time. I know the feeling. And now Dal's talking about going to uni to become a lawyer. I know it'll be expensive, like, but... But he's all made up. Oh, yeah, we are, but... You know, it's only two years away, and it's not just the fees we're going to have to find. It's everything else on top. Very glad you didn't have the baby, then. Who told you that? Adele did. Why, it's not a secret, is it? 
I don't doubt that you love Max. What you said yesterday convinced me of that. And I'm sure Max loves you, but he hasn't exactly got the best track record. OK, so he's cheated on Suzanne and Patricia. But that was in the past. It doesn't mean to say he's going to cheat on me. People do change, you know. People say they'll change. And I believe him. And I'm sure he believes it right now. But how old is he? 44. And he's never really made a commitment to anything in his whole life before. I mean, how many jobs has he had? He's been a surveyor. Then there was the restaurant. Then he went off to sail around the world. Oh, right. So that's another black mark against him. The fact that instead of sticking in one dreary job and moaning about it for the rest of his life, he had the guts to go off and do something else. And leave Susanna behind on her own with two small children. But that was then. That was him and Susanna, not me. And anyway, I think it's great that someone can be brave enough to say, OK, I'm not happy, this is not the life I want, and start again. Or selfish enough. That's the other way of looking at it. Someone who doesn't follow through. Someone who runs away when the going gets tough. Someone who doesn't like staying for the long haul. Is that what you really want, Jackie? So when did Adele tell you about the abortion? Last week. But she's been really mature about it. Very. Now, because most girls of her age, they just want a baby. They wouldn't think about what was involved or what they'd be giving up. But Adele, she'd really thought about it. I mean, you'd be the one who was left looking after it otherwise. And let's face it, who'd want to be stuck with a baby at 16? Are you so pleased that she's been so sensible? I'm not going into this totally wide-eyed, you know. Maybe it'll work out and maybe it won't. But I want to try. And I think Max is worth trying for. We're not just partners. He's my best mate. We click. He's there for me. Look, I'm not a teenager and I do know my own mind. And I know that what I feel for Max is real. And maybe I have to go through all the disasters with Nathan and Robbie to make me realise what I want from a fella. And I've got it all in Max. I mean... Don't you feel like that with me, Dad? All right, well, maybe not right now, but you know what I mean, don't you? Oh, please, Anthea, can you try and convince me, Dad, that I know what I'm doing? <sighs> I'll do my best. But don't expect miracles. Not where your dad's concerned. Oh, thanks. Do you want another coffee? Uh, something stronger would be nice if I've got to talk to your dad. See what I can do. So, how are you getting on? Everyone keeps telling me it'll get better, but it wasn't so far. How about you? I still can't believe he's dead. I keep thinking I'm going to wake up and realise it's all a bad dream. I wish. My mum said you told her about the wedding. Yeah. Like I said, it's nice you've kept in touch with her. Nice for me too. Nice to have your mum to talk to. Makes me feel I haven't totally lost them. I'm sorry. For what? <laughs> just making a show of myself. For missing our Clint. I just don't think I'll ever get over him. I'm sorry. <sighs> Come in. So what's wrong? Nothing. Linz, I know when something's bothering you. What is it? It's just me. I feel like I've messed up my whole life. Oh, so what would you rather be doing then? Hanging round with your old gangster mates? Just wish I had a life, that's all. You've got a life? You're a young single mother. Dad, I want something to look forward to. Instead of getting up, cooking, cleaning, and going to work, watching telly, I feel 49 instead of 29. Love, look, if you want to get out of an evening, I don't mind doing a bit of babysitting for you. I couldn't want to go out with. Well, ask someone! I tried. I tried yesterday with Jackie Dixon to patch things up and she didn't want to know. She still thinks I'm the same person I was two years ago when I'm not. I know I'm not. I've changed. Just wish... I just wish someone would give me a chance. And I don't think anyone will. And remember, you lot, no squabbling. She's here. We can start now. Hello, love. Good day. So-so. How are you feeling? OK. 
Do you want a glass of wine? No, thanks. Well, shall I make you a cup of tea? I'll get one in a minute. Right, Adele. Are you going to open your presses now, or shall we wait until you've eaten? You can do it now if you want. I'll open Steve's first. Oh, oh, that's great. Just the sort of thing your new friend, Emily O'Leary, might wear. What do you mean, my new friend? Oh, I had a very interesting chat with Emily as we closed up. About what? About your abortion. And how Emily thinks you've been so sensible and mature about everything. And what a good job it was you decided to get rid of the baby because you didn't want to mess up your chances of going to uni and becoming a lawyer. Die. What? Steady on. Steady on about what, Marty? About the fact that your daughter's been going around the parade boasting about what she's been up to. Well, I'm glad she thinks an abortion's something to brag about. I wasn't bragging about it. So what were you doing telling the likes of her? I just wanted to tell someone who wouldn't judge me. Oh, right, Adele. So I'm supposed to tell you every day how brave you've been and how well you're coping. At least Emily understands that I couldn't have kept it. You could have kept it, but you didn't. You decided to go for the easy option. Die. Leave it there. I will not leave it, cos it's about time Madam heard a few home truths. About how I felt having to hear the conversation in the first place. And like how I feel every single day of my life, knowing that this is my only chance ever to have a baby. While this one gets rid of one and thinks it's a good story. Hiya. Hi. Mm. Oh, you're in a good mood. Well, I bumped into Auntie when I was out. Anyway, we went for a coffee and, fingers crossed, she's going to try and talk me dad round as well comes to the wedding. Oh, well, don't get your hopes up too much. Uh, who was who said the box was having a change of heart? Not expecting anyone, are you? No, I don't think so. Hang on. <sighs> Hi, Max. What a bad time, is it? I don't know. Not at all. Uh, come in. Oh, hello, Jackie. This is getting like your second home. Hi, Lisa. Would you like a drink or anything? No, it's fine. I'm not stopping. I just wanted to drop these in. All right. I was thinking with the new school year about to start, we ought to get Harry and Emma's names down somewhere ASAP. That's if we're not too late already. Down where? Prep school. So what's wrong with the local primary school? It's what Susanna would have wanted for them. Right. So how much do these places cost? Well, most of the schools that I've been looking at cost roughly a thousand a term. How much? And what'd you get for that? The best. Uh, we hope. Anyway, I've been ringing round and two of the schools have got their open days the week after next, so I've arranged for us to go over and meet the staff. Uh, which day? Friday. Well, you know, that might be a bit of a problem. Because? Because we've got something arranged for that day. We? Yeah, that's right. No, I tell you what, why don't you go along uh, on your own, see which you think are the best, and then maybe you and I could go along and visit them another day. Max, I think if we leave it much longer, we may find that we're out of luck. Are you sure you can't rearrange whatever it is that both of you are doing that day? Uh, no, 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 certainly not. Well, not uh, at such short notice. And why is that, then? Because that's the day we've decided to get married. OK. Yeah. How's our Jacqueline, then? How did you know about that? Well, I went out to look for you and I saw the two of you in the bar and a good chinwag. I suppose she was bending your ear about the wedding again, was she? Look, I know you've got a few misgivings about this. A bit more than misgivings. And I know you and Max have never really got on. It's not about me and Max. It's about him being a totally unsuitable husband for our Jacqueline. She's a grown woman. It's not up to you to make her choices. More's a pity. And she's thought it all through. The pitfalls, the kind of man Max is. So why is she still going through with it then? Because she loves him. <laughs> really? Well, she may have talked you round, but I'm not falling for it. So how long has this been going on? Well, long enough for us to know we've made the right choice. But I take it it started before Susanna died? No. Are you sure about that? Lisa, we don't have to justify ourselves to you. I have responsibilities to Harry and Emma. <laughs> so why didn't you tell me about the wedding? Because we thought you'd react like this. Were you ever planning on telling me? Or were you going to let me wait till I saw the pictures in the paper? Of course we were going to tell you. Really? And I suppose you're deeply in love. Well, that is why we're getting married. Oh, Max, can't you see you're being taken for a ride? <sighs> Don't be ridiculous. No, Max, you're the one who's being ridiculous. I mean, look at yourself. You're a middle-aged man with failed marriages behind you. <sighs> 
I admit that there's a bit of an age gap, but that's not unusual. Max, you're hardly Michael Douglas. And she's certainly not Catherine Zeta-Jones. Just who do you think you are? I can tell you exactly how all this is going to pan out. She's going to move in, get her feet firmly under the table, and when she thinks she's given it a decent interval, you'll be out on your ear and she'll have what she wants. Your son. He's my son as well. And that is not why we're getting married, OK? So you're going to wreck her big day? I've told you, I'm not going to stand there and give me blessing to something that I don't believe in. You don't have to give your blessing. Just turning up will be enough. You OK? Sorry about that. Stop saying you're sorry, will you? What a mate for, eh? Do you know what's really hard? It's seeing Jackie swan around making all her arrangements for this wedding. What's her granddad? There's nothing to be jealous of, there. No, I'm not jealous. Not like that. It just reminds me what I should have had, and now I won't. I know. You've always been a scheming little bitch. You're a fine one to talk. That's all you've ever done. All your life, schemed your way into making a bit of money. I, I've worked hard to make my money. I didn't have it handed to me on a plate. And now you're scheming your way into this. Lisa, you should go. Don't worry, Max, I'm not staying. But I tell you one thing, you marry that girl and I'll fight you every inch of the way. Because there's no way she's bringing up Susanna's children. <sighs> I'm not arguing with it. And I don't care what our Jackie said or what she hasn't said. I'm not going. And I'll go a step further, shall I? If I can stop this wedding from happening, then I will. It's just so typical, that's all. In everything she does, everything that goes wrong, she always comes up smelling of roses. And me. The one time I find a fella that would really love. Yeah, well, don't worry. This is one time she's definitely not going to come out smelling of roses. Maybe we could start over again, after the way you abused my friendship. I ended up behind bars because of it. I and you're going to be the best man at the wedding. I'll tell you what the truth is. The truth you won't want it here is that you've just walked yourself out of Harry and Emma's lives. Well, all I can say is that you don't know me as well as you thought you did. You're going to curse the day you ever met me. I promise. You can see the Omnibus tomorrow at 7.20, followed by an evening of Madonna from 8.45. Next up all, Rachel's mixing business with pleasure just a bit too much in Friends. <laughs>